Hi everyone. On this lesson, we're going to cover everything that you need to demonstrate for your new belt. So we'll go over forms, one steps, breakaways, sparring skills, and everything else that you need to know to qualify for your exam and to do very well on it. The most important thing is the one we're going to start with right now. And I think that you already know that is meeting our black belt challenge and showing that you're becoming a black belt in life. So no matter what belt you're going for, we want to know that you understand what being a black belt really means, what living like a black belt means. And that means being strong, caring, compassionate, and helpful. So let's talk about how you can demonstrate that. We are working on integrity and perseverance as our goal this quarter. And we have a wonderful life model in William Wilberforce. So when we have integrity, we are doing what we know is the right thing to do. And that is a great comfort to us and also to the people around us that they can rely on us to do the right thing. Then secondly, perseverance means that we'll keep doing the right thing when it gets difficult or even when it gets nearly impossible, we keep doing the right thing. So I'd like you to tell us, and if you're a young person, your mom and dad to give us examples of how you've been caring and compassionate and helpful and patient with your family and also showing compassion for people who don't live with us, who may not be like us, but are also a very, very important part of our human family. So. Thank you for being one of my students. Thank you very much for working towards your black belt so diligently. And thank you very much for really taking seriously our responsibility to be a black belt in life. Now that we've reminded ourselves about how Tosan segments could look as one steps, Let's review how they're actually going to occur in the form. So in the form, we need to think about stances that we're probably not thinking about in one steps. In the form, we need to think about turns that we're probably not thinking about in the one steps as much. So let's begin right with the beginning techniques. So the first thing we need to make sure is we've got stances. So front stance means that our front leg is substantially bent, our back leg is straight, unlocked but straight, and we've got all our tension and weight forward here this way. So most of our weight on our front foot but we're able to move smoothly because we have bent leg. To move from front stance, remember we need to bend our back leg whether we're moving forward or whether we're turning. So bend your back leg before you do anything else on this stance. So on this, we have a couple of long turns in front stance in this form. So one is, Stand on one railroad track instead of two and rotate your feet around to the other railroad track. So I'll try to get where you can see my feet here. So I have parallel lines going this way. Step onto the same track, rotate, and then push your foot out into another balanced front stance, 180 degrees away. So onto the same line, turn 180. Onto the same line, turn 180. Next uh, stance will occur in this form is back stance. So back stance means that our heels are in line with each other, one pointed 90 degrees away from the other. This one pointed the same direction, usually as our tension and as our strike, and our body faces the same direction as the back foot. And both knees are substantially bent with most of our weight on our rear foot. So we should be able to pick up our front foot without moving our body backwards like this. So just step forward, heels in line with each other, knees bent. Now, to move smoothly with this one, keep your knees bent so your head is not rising and falling in between. Another way that we have front stance in this form is turning a full 180 degrees forward across from the back foot. So all the way around from a front stance like this, completely all the way around to here. So I'll try to be facing you better. So this way, step all the way around to a new front stance going this direction. Now, as I mentioned when we were doing the one steps, is some of the techniques in this form only occur on one side of your body. So it's really incumbent upon us to practice both sides of our body on every technique that we do. 
It's going to feel strange to you at first, especially if you've spent a lot of years doing Kosan with techniques only on one side of your body. So be diligent and practice both. Okay? So that's most of the stances that occur, and we'll let's talk about application of those. So first of all, we'll start out from this parallel stance or ready stance. Chunbi. Chunbi means our never-ending path towards perfection, or another way is uh, stating our commitment that we'll never leave the path of seeking self-improvement or self-discipline. So we're going to step out and out of forearm block at 90 degrees, reach to solar plexus level, reverse punch, double step to change that front stance around, reach in, reverse punch. Now, when we get to the actual form, we'll give you a lot, lot more detail on every one of the turns and the shape we're trying to make, and we'll give you a long uh, video that you can review uh, that will help you do the slow motion, fast, all those things. So let's talk about another segment of this form. This one starts in back stance, and this is the one that's only done on one side of the body. So from here, uh, I'm reaching out with my hand, pushing down, spearing over the top here horizontally, and then turning the hand uh, right to vertical at impact. So most of the time, our hands are turning over the same time. This one's called reinforced. It's not structurally reinforced, just artistically reinforced right behind the elbow. So not our armpit or elbow. So here, double knife hand, and then spear over the top. Then the hand is grabbed, so we have to do the breakaway from there. So the breakaway that I'm doing is stabbing straight forward like this. So rotating my hips to stab straight forward like this. And then spin around. This is that front stance to front stance, 180 degrees moving forward uh, to the same front stance, one right in front of the other. And again, that's back fist. So remember, back fist is one of the very few techniques in Taekwondo where our hand wrist is bent and leading with the striking surface of the knuckles. So we talked about a lot of this in, in the one steps just to help you get an understanding of it, but I want you to understand how we're going to do these without somebody there impeding our progress forward, because this is a form that travels forward and back and also has an arrowhead at the top for some of these techniques. So another example would be when we're doing this, this segment, so spreading block, front kick, and then punch, punch. So in our one steps, we need to do front leg or we need to step back. But in the form, we almost always keep moving forward, keep moving forward. So we'd step forward into this. Remember, it could be a block and a strike to the face, or it could be spreading uh, some hands that are just leaning on our shoulders, obviously not a choke. Uh, and then coming from our back leg, front kick, reach on reverse side, and end up in front stance on reverse side. So those sh should have one two, three, all ending up at the same spot. One reach, two punches. Uh, other one is middle stance we haven't talked about. So middle stance, or horse riding stance, so our knees are pushed back, our hips are pushed forward, and we've got our weight substantially down the middle of this. And the technique we're doing is this, is chop, and then we're also moving with this. So eye contact, fold on top, move into identical stance on the other side identical stance on the other side. This is a really easy one to come up and down on. So stay down here low and move smoothly from bent leg to bent leg. So those are a few examples of how the form applies. And we'll go into a lot of detail on it next week. But try to follow along with this and do some of these segments in practice. And then it'll make it much simpler for you to uh, do the actual form correctly with good focus and good power when we get to it. Welcome back everyone. So a couple of days ago, we worked on creating our own sparring combinations. And so I wanna make sure that you have the opportunity to do that and get ready for some testing sparring combinations that we think would be good for this. So let me talk to you about how many combinations do you have and how many combinations do you need? Well, it's always best to do ones that you know really, really well. So we'll only do a couple today, uh, but I want to give you a sense of how many you really have. This was an early lesson that Grandmaster Hawkins 
taught us when we were getting ready for tournaments, especially the national tournament circuit. So if you have three moves and you do a three move combination and you don't repeat any of those techniques during the three move combination, that's three choices you have on the first one, two on the second one, and one on the third one. That is six combinations. So if you do repeat them, then of course you have three times three times three, which is 27. What about if you have four? So one, two, three, four. What if you have four techniques? Well, that would be four times three times two times one, which would be 24 combinations. That's a lot, right? Just from four techniques. And if you did, you did repeat them, you'd have four times four times four times four, which I think is 256. That's a lot of combinations. Here's the thing though. Some of those you don't want to use. So let's go back to talk about those basics. Most of the time, whether you're aggressing or defending, you want to use front hand or front foot to break the distance or to make the distance. So let's just start out with a couple of those. So, so my dog thinks I might have got the math wrong, so he's trying to correct me. I hope I got it right. Anyway, there you go. Maybe he'll help us with some new combinations. All right, so let's try this. We're going to move forward and we're going to jab. Remember that represents front hand, two, and three. So I think we did this one the other day. So moving forward, leaving this hand right where it is. Reverse, look where my other hand went back to protect myself because I'm turning towards the person. And then knee up quickly to defend that hole. When I'm facing this way, there's a big hole here. I want to get that knee up quickly to protect myself from counterattack. Okay, so move forward, go, go. All right, we're going to do exactly the same thing going backwards. So one, oh yeah, I didn't add that, did I? So <laughs> if you're going forward, backward, left or right, whether you're angling or circling, I guess that's four times each of those numbers that I just gave you. So that makes even bigger numbers. Okay, so, uh, and you could be changing directions during the combination too, right? Wow, now the number's getting astronomical. Anyway, here we go. We're gonna slide away from the person. So slide and stick, so make distance and stick, Hopefully, if we stuck him strongly, we've got him frozen, and then we can come with our back leg again. If not, jab, cross, and he's still advancing. Change his mind about that, okay? So, three moves used a couple of different ways, right? So let's try that again. So, fade away, punch. He's not giving us space, lead leg. Fade away, punch, back leg front kick, all right? So there's a couple of ways to use one combination, one combination. So practice this one a lot of times. Jab, make the distance, cross, and front kick. One, two, three, and try fading. One, two, three. Other side, fade. One, two, three. So please notice where when we're kicking, both hands are up and elbows are in, elbows are in. All right, so now you can add your favorite kick to that. We looked at the other day, jab, cross, inward axe. We looked at jab, cross, outward axe. We looked at jab, cross, excuse me, jab, cross, jab, side kick. So that takes us up to four, jab, cross, jab, side kick, and again, those can be used aggressing or defending, depending on how our partner's reacting. So choose one or two and practice them one million times. And when I see you on testing, I'll be able to notice that you use your front hand for defense, your front hand for offense, your front foot for defense, your front foot for offense, and I'll be really happy that you're staying covered and protected all the time that you're throwing uh, the techniques, okay? So good luck with that, practice hard, and I'll look forward to watching you do that soon. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about head movement. So we'll just do three uh, of the basic ones, fade and roll and slip. So we'll just work on those three. Now I know a lot of people in martial arts think that's just for boxing 
or for MMA or for other ring sports. I disagree because what we know in the real world, bullies and other predators are very good at selecting their victims, they're very good at approaching their victims, and they're very good at some one thing that will intimidate or hurt or, in other words, capture, either psychologically or physically, capture uh, or subdue their prey. So, if we let a predator get too close to us, we don't recognize it early enough, we don't intervene early enough with our eye contact, with our body language, then we may be left in the position of moving out of some, the way of something really quickly. And also we need to be in a position where we can counterattack. So, head movement, it, when it's done right, allows us to do three things. One is it allows us not to get hit. Obviously, job number one is not to get hit. Number two is it leaves us in a good position to keep our balance so that we can affect our escape. And number three is it means that we're not overcommitted with our balance so that we can counter. It may even, in some cases, drop our shoulder back so that we have even more power when we go to counter the attack. So let's just talk about three. I'll do it facing this way so you can see. The first one is moving back. Now, Shot is coming, we're measuring it, and we're moving back out naturally. It's a natural reflex, but a human reflex is to turn like this and then be off balance and then get overwhelmed by what else is coming at us. So really what we want to do is just make sure that we're keeping our balance. So just bend our back leg and get back a little bit. So just bend our back leg and get back. So you've all seen video of Muhammad Ali or Sugar Ray Leonard being right at the end of a punch and not getting hurt by it because they're just out of range of the power. So that's what we'd love to be able to do if we were Muhammad Ali or Sugar Ray Leonard, but we need to be able to get our head out of the way and still keep our balance, not be overcommitted, and be able to counterattack quickly. So uh, that's, what we, that's what I call fade, all right? So lots of different ways to do that. Fade, just bend your back knee and we'll pull your head away, all right? So, just watch, just the act of bending your back knee moves you a little bit further away. Right? I may not have time, I absolutely want to move my feet first. I want to run, I want to get out of there. But I just may not have time to do that. I may not even have time to move from my waist. So just bending my knee and getting the habit of moving my head a little bit further away can help. So the next one is slipping. Slipping, now you've seen boxers, just amazing wait till the very, very last second and let that thing slip by them and they're moving in at the same time and being able to counter. That's an amazing skill to have and we can develop that with enough practice. Okay, thousands of repetitions, we can learn almost anything. So a safer way for us amateurs to learn to evade that is just to drop our shoulder like this. So rotate our shoulder, still bending our knees. The key to all of this is keeping our balance and not being overcommitted. If I try to pull my head out of the way, I can be coming off balance. So uh, I'm trying not to overreact, but just do the minimum reaction I can. So just snap the shoulder down in a way, and you can see the line. So I'll try to keep my hand still so you can see that it doesn't take very much movement for me to be completely off the line of this shot, okay? If I drop my other shoulder, it doesn't take very much movement for it to be off the line. So it can drop either shoulder. This one would wind up your lead hand, and this one would wind up your back hand, okay? So we don't want to be off balance. We want to make sure that we're doing it by knee bending mostly, but of course we're doing our best not to get hit. Now ideally, you'd like to be going past that punch and moving in towards the person, but that's not for beginners for sure. Okay, and the other one is slipping. So slipping, you think of it like a U, or if you're going to counterattack, a J. All right, so a U, this means you see something coming horizontally or almost horizontally, and so we got to get under that and then come up to counter, or come under that and stay down and counter. So either a J, so just a, a quick vertical drop. Again, how are we accomplishing that with our knees? So quick vertical drop come around so we can counter, or come down and back up again and count. But we want to make sure that the rotation of our hips is generating the power that we need to throw our shoulder into the shot and then our hands. Remember, if our shoulder's traveling fast, we can make our hand travel fast. And the only way to get our shoulder traveling fast 
So make sure it's getting power from the floor, through our legs, driving our hips. So, quick review of that. Fade, just moving back a little bit. Fade, not like this, not with a straight body. And that's gonna be, it takes a lot of practice to not overreact to something coming directly at your eyes. So, uh, we know it's gonna hurt. We, our body will try to defend itself, but try to keep eye contact, try to stay in a, in a balanced position and just fade, okay? So that just took my head enough away, I hope, to get out of this shot. That's coming directly straight at me. Another way to avoid that straight shot coming straight at you is slipping, right? So just slam one shoulder down, this, and look what I'm doing with my knees. Same time, bending my knees, okay? So it takes my head off the line, off the line, okay? And then the other one is rolling in a U or in a J. Right, so rolling in a U, coming up here, rolling in a J, stay down here. So those are three basic movements that can help protect you uh, by moving your head out of the way of immediate danger. This week in class, we got questions about uh, protecting ourselves on the ground. So not Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but how do we do it in self-defense, and how do we do it in um, black belt testing? So I love Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I think it's an amazing art form. I love the way that it's uh, so humane, uh, but this is a little bit more um, serious, no rules kind of self-defense. So we'll just talk about initial movements from prone and supine, uh, again, with an enhanced threat. So that's what we're really trying to cover, is that first couple of moves to deal with an enhanced threat. So we'll start with uh, a mounted uh, ground and pound, okay? So if you can lie down here, let's curl you. Um, that's fine, as long as you can. Yep, that's good. So, so this way, already mounted and ground and pounding like this. So the first thing we have to remember is that it's probably not gonna be a trained fighter, it's probably gonna be uh, somebody uh, from the street, and so they're probably only going to have one hand that they're really good or confident with. And so we have to make that first hand miss. So we're going to move our head as well as protect our body uh, from the shot. So as that shot is, is, has arrived, as soon as they realize they're missed, or even before they realize they're missed, we're going to wrap up as high as we can on that. And instead of, they're going to spend a second or two, guaranteed, they're going to spend a second or two trying to pull that hand out push on you this way to try to get that hand free. So we're, before that happens, as soon as we wrap, we're gonna roll our body this way, put weight on that arm, and then attack eyes, throat, wherever we can reach to make them use their other hand to protect themselves, use their other hand to defend themselves or cherish the injury. So one more time on that one, try to make the shot miss. You do everything you can to get your head out of the way, wrap that arm as high as you can, roll on top of it, and then counterattack with the other hand immediately to eyes and make them do this, okay? So this is the first initial movement. After that, you can use all the skills that you've gained uh, from BJJ or from wrestling or from other martial arts to get this person uh, to do what uh, you need them to do, which is change their mind without you. So the next one was uh, prone. This time Carly will be the bad guy. So this time I'm down on my face like this, and again, we're going to do everything we can to avoid getting in these situations, but I got dumped on the deck, and now this person's grabbing my hair and slamming my head into the deck. So I really don't want to take too many of those shots. So again, I'm trying to interrupt the first shot if I can, but certainly not letting the second one happen. So I'm first of all going to bring my elbow across right in line with my nose, and then the head will get dumped down into the uh, forearm, and then grab my head so they can't pull it up again. Uh, I don't need, I'm fairly well covered from shots, and I'm fairly well covered from grabs. Again, I only need a second, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive my knee up underneath the other knee, right? So drive my knee up and then totally commit everything across this way so I can begin counterattacking from where I am here. So one more time. Take care of the biggest threat first. The biggest threat is my head hitting the asphalt. Uh, cover, grab, drive your knee underneath, roll over, smack, and start counterattacking from here. 
Okay? So hopefully that will help you from both prone and supine positions. Uh, and again, these are enhanced threats, not just somebody holding you down there, but somebody striking you or using the ground to hit you with um, and do our initial response. Hope that's helpful.